Carts on circuit then for DD2, and let's take you straight through the grid for this one. It's Paolo De Conto, the quickest man from yesterday and the most winningest driver as well. He'll be on pole position with the first of the Markinen brothers alongside that Rasmus, who took a heat victory as well on Saturday. Row two sees the likes of French Kanskar and Anthony Abbas. Both of those doing very well within the championship are going to be there or thereabouts, third and fourth on the grid. Back to row three, it's going to be Robbie Markinen and Marcel Schirmer, and of course his dad celebrating his birthday today back at home. His uh, rest of the family up in the grandstand and watching on here today at Sete Laghi. Row four then has Max Hoffer and Luca Kamali. To row five is Kevin Ludi, who's third in the championship coming here this weekend. He's got work to do from ninth on the grid. He's got local man Cesar Ennio to start alongside. Row six then has the first of the Masters runners, which is Cristiano Magado returning to the championship here this weekend. And Mark Glupfer is alongside. Back to row seven, it's going to be Barry Pullinger and Lorenzo Van Wright. Row eight sees Maxi Fleischmann and Enrique Baptista. Row nine is going to be Pascal uh, Carge and Dimitris Vaziraras and to row 10 is Constantine Scholl and the second of our masters our lady racer Tamsin Germain row 11 then the, the combination of Iga Mukin another masters runner and Alessio Curto row 12 sees Christoph Adams and Martin Pierce champion from last year and winner at this precise round row 13 Philip Siwa and Fabian Lanz row 14 the likes of Samuel Haruska and Giza Fodor row 15 the penultimate row has Kavazi Tomokazu the winner from the first round at Salbury in France and Tom Pitlick alongside and right towards the back, 31st on the grid, is going to be Marc Bateau, the Frenchman, to round out the grid of carts, which work their way down towards turn 11 and are ready for, again, an extended race, which is going to be over 13 laps, Chris. Yep, and I'm glad to see it's that many laps because it's going to be exciting. Those front three rows, every single driver on there is one of the ones that I'd be tempted to put money on, so uh, that's why my wallet is padlocked for this one. I just haven't got a clue. Two speed gearboxes, and they're getting ready to take the start. Are, are they going to be released? We are. Does, the lights have gone out, so everybody has been released for this fight. Into the lead is our pole man, who has just been in a, a league of his own, quite frankly, all weekend. Paolo De Conto has that lead. Second is French Conshire, who is one of the drivers who I really feel could put that pressure, and he's got ahead of Rasmus Markinen, who has got that third position. But going down the back straight from about fifth da downwards, they're going side by side, but it is still in the lead. Paolo De Conto, can he stretch away from French Conshire? I don't think Conshire is going to want to let him go. These are slightly different conditions to what everybody's been experiencing so far. How it, what kind of effect is this going to have on De Conto's car? The sun is hidden behind the clouds this time, and uh, hence, at this moment, Matt, Paolo De Canto's not pulling away. No, French Cans car right there with him in second place as they complete the first lap in this DD2 pre-final. Third place, the first of the Markinens, which is Rasmus. We've got Robbie behind there in fourth place. And Anthony Abbas, not the best of starts from the outside of row two, but that was kind of expected, of course. The outside line, not a chance to get into the inside. So Anthony Abbas finds himself down in fifth place. But the top two are breaking away now. So French Kanska is going to try and go with uh, Paolo De Conto as best possible here. They've just about shaken off the wobbly Rasmus Markkinen down towards turn number six. And a move there for fourth place. Down the inside goes Anthony Abbas. It doesn't take him long at all, does it? Anthony, straight on the money. The man who leads the championship just by two points after the first round. He now finds himself in fourth place. Let's see if he can work with the likes of Robbie Markkinen now, who's behind him. And of course, Max. Hoffer as well who sits there in at sixth place a little bit offline through turn 11 there was Paolo De Conto so he may be under attack through the next half of this lap as they work the way again down towards turn number one the gap between the two is just under two tenths of a second but French Kanskar has sorted this cart out it looks fantastically quick out there he's not going to let Paolo get away is he at the minute Absolutely not, and I tell you what, Max Hoff has actually got past Robbie Markkinen, and he's now up into fifth position. Look out for the blue and white car and overalls, and I think that he's going to be continuing that progress he's had to make during the course of yesterday, and he's up there into that fifth position already after starting in seventh, and I think he's going to be trying to close in on Anthony Abbas. Don't forget Anthony Abbas, championship leader. He's desperately trying to get up the front and play with these lead two. Paolo De Conto's not getting his own way like he has done so far yesterday. French Conchart is right there on him. And the first of the marker and is desperately trying to see if he can close in. But he's probably feeling, breathing down his neck. His championship leader, Anthony Abbas, has closed to within 0.3 of a second onto that third position. He's sat in fourth. He wants to take that third and close in on the lead two. But he's not getting his own way at the moment. 
That was a better lap though from Paolo De Conto who doubled the gap over himself in French Cancer Car because it has grown just over four tenths of a second. So much better from Paolo. Still all action for third place as you said between Rasmus Markkinen and Anthony Abbas down the inside line at turn number seven and there's going to be side by side action on the run towards turn number nine although I think Anthony Abbas has just managed to hold it. Yes he has. So cart 6.06. What a move from Anthony Abbas. A poor start to this race down in fifth and sixth places but now gradually lap by lap the places are starting to come to Anthony Abbas. He's got a good old gap now to close down on uh, French Kanskar. It sits at 1.2 seconds. So a real, real task now in hand for Anthony Abbas. And he's not going to be shaking off the man behind Rasmus Markkinen just yet because he's right there on his tail in towards turn two. And Anthony Abbas now needs to work hard with the uh, just under nine laps we've got remaining. Martel Schumer has actually moved up a position as they came across the line then. He's up into seventh position and uh, he'll be looking to continue that. He obviously lost out on the start, started in sixth, and that was because he will have been on the outside, obviously, going down into turn one as they took the lights. But uh, out in the lead, he's, he is looking in control, Paolo de Conto, but he's not pulling away at the same rate he was in the heats yesterday. French Conchar is desperately trying to uh, keep him honest and, uh, and, and doing a great job in fairness. But uh, I wonder if he's going to know just yet that, that just behind him now is Anthony Abbas. And he has now managed to just slightly shake off Rasmus Markkinen. And he is going to be trying to reel in. He's going to lasso the back of French Conchar's cart and try and drag himself up to see if he can get himself up yet another position. Someone who suffered on that lap at the start of the lap was 11th, Cesa Enio, now down to 16th place. A real disappointment for Cesa on uh, his home track. So Cesa's down the order now. Just looking at the Masters class, Cristiano Magado is our leader at the minute, down in 11th place. Second in that class is going to be Martin Pierce, who's at 19th place at the minute. And you've got to watch out for the likes of Tams in Germain. You've got Igor Mukin, in fact, just up one place ahead of Martin Pierce. So those two together for second and third in Masters. And in fact, Martin Pierce has just lost another place on this lap to Alessio Curto uh, but not within the Masters class so there goes Paolo De Conto through we'll keep an eye on the Masters class as ever to see if that changes but just like he did yesterday Cristiano Magado is really having a strong race a good fight he's having with the likes of Mark Lutfer and of course just up the road from him as well is going to be Lorenzo Van Rijt so he's in between that sandwich at the minute well, out the lead now, Paolo Di Can Di Conto is just starting to stretch his legs away from second position, French Concha. He's only pulling about a tenth of a second uh, each lap away, so he's not just absolutely leaving him for dead, but he is in control of this at the moment. i tell you what's interesting, the one that's not in control, Anthony Abbas, I thought once he got up into that third, he was going to then pull away from Rasmus Markin and start closing in onto Concha absolutely not he's under growing pressure for that third position Rasmus Markinen wants to get that position back again he didn't enjoy watching Abbas move past him a couple of laps ago what is he going to be able to do for, about it nothing quite at the moment there's a bit too much of a gap as they went into turn two but he's going to try and carry as much speed as possible through four and five the second of the complex is to carry the speed onto this long uh, back straight but probably not quite close enough at the moment but look who those two are being joined by. Max Hoffer in the blue and white machine. And you've also got to watch out for Robbie Markkinen as well in his cart. Those two are getting closer and closer before too much longer. It's going to be a four-way fight. In fact, it now is for third place. So Anthony Abbas, after getting past Rasmus Markkinen, now has attacked from all angles here as he heads his way down through the hairpin in towards the left-hander at turns 11 uh, and then on towards the right at 12. Those four will come through. And that's the closest battle on track at the minute because Paolo De Conto has has a second lead now in hand over French Kanskar. We've just got under five laps to go as they work their way now onto the ninth lap of this DD2 pre-final race. Down towards the back straight goes Paolo. Second is still going to be French Kanskar. Anthony Abbas sits there in third place. Fourth place then for Rasmus Markkinen. Max Hoffer is fifth and sixth place for Robbie Markkinen. Not at the minute. The moves aren't going to be made. But of course, but before we get to the, the last couple of abs, they'll be easing themselves into those positions. They'll be lining themselves up for some moves. And you can guarantee on the last lap or a couple of laps before, the moves will then start to come, Chris. Oh, absolutely. They've got to be aware. The drivers were telling us that the, uh, the tyres are probably only good for three ultimate flying laps here before they start uh, going off a little bit. So they're going to have to just manage this and yes they're going to want to make a move uh, as the race progresses uh, and they don't want to shoot their bolt too soon you've, you've said it in numerous races Matt that uh, put yourself up front you're the one that everybody's shooting at 
but look at this out the front. He might be out the front, Paolo Di Conto, but no one can take any kind of shot at him at the moment. It is his home track. He did one win here in 2014. He came second in the Winter Cup, but the best thing that stands in my mind is his own competitors, his peers, were telling us that he is the best driver around this circuit. He's certainly showing it at the moment. Yeah, they certainly did, and he's doing exactly that. So Paolo Di Conto, it looked like he was going to have an attack from French Kanskar in the first two or three laps, but since then, he's managed to open up this gap and he's pulling away gradually lap by lap as he comes through the final corner on towards the 11th lap of the race he now goes French Kanskar sits at an extended 1.6 seconds adrift at the minute it's double the gap then from second to third with Anthony Abbas still just about holding on but now the attack is starting to come once again because Rasmus Markkinen has really started to pick up the speed he's going to take Max Hoffer with him the one that's dropping off for the minute is going to be Robbie Markkinen. He's not really with those three at the minute for third, fourth and fifth places. And that gap is now just starting to grow. Three or four cart lengths now between those two cars. But Max Hoffer, I think he could be one to watch out for as well because he's doing very well. Seventh on the grid, fifth place at the minute. And let's see if he can make a move on either of these ahead. Of course, we've got Rasmus Markkinen and Anthony Abbas as they work their way towards the hairpin at turn number 10. Paolo De Conto got nothing to worry about the minute. at the minute. The man who still continues to lead this one. Yeah, and across the line he comes again, and uh, equally really, the second position, French Concha, is having a very controlled race there. The interesting thing, though, you see, is Rasmus Markkinen, he's going to want to make a move on Anthony Abbas, and he's certainly getting within that striking distance. You can see him lining it up, but the problem is, if he makes a move and it doesn't quite come off, he's at the mercy of Max Hoffer, and in fact, it's Max Hoffer that has closed in, that I think that... Uh, uh, Rasmus Markkinen just got slightly bolted going through the first of the complexes, turns two and three, by Anthony Abbas, which has then put Max Hoffer right on his tail. And the three of them, you see them coming into turn nine, all heading down towards turn ten. Three of them, line astern, absolutely joined together. And uh, in fact, look at that. You've then got the, uh, the second of the Markkinen brothers, R Robbie Markkinen. is kind of turning that from a watching brief to possibly joining on the back of Max Hoffer. And of course, that move that uh, Rasmus Markkinen wants to do will just be hanging around in his mind that Max Hoffer, if he does make a move, will launch on him. So he'll just be wary of that for the time being as he tries to make a move on Anthony Abbas on this. Now, the final lap of the DD2 pre-final race, I think he's just kind of pulled away now from Max Hoffer. So if he wants to have a go, he'll have the best opportunity down towards the hairpins at turns 9 and 10. But of course, there's no stopping the man out front. Paolo De Conto about to work his way through the final couple of corners. He's been the star man this weekend. He's won all of his heats and he's about to take the pre-final win as well. Absolutely, here he comes round that turn number 10, the final hairpin into the left-hander, turn number 11, then flick to the right for turn 12, onto the start, finish straight, over the rumble strip he goes and takes that checkered flag and a great victory, second position, French Conchire. He holds on to third, does Anthony Abbas, just behind him, Rasmus Markin and Max Hoffer that were joined together for virtually all of that race, but not quite able to make the move. In sixth position was the other Markkinen brother, Robbie Markkinen. Kevin Ludy, uh, who uh, featured in the championship standings, finishing in eighth position. So another one that has largely been turned on its head. It certainly has. He'll get uh, a fairly good amount of points for that one, will Kevin Ludy. But it is, of course, Paolo De Conto who comes away with the first victory of the day in DD2. He wins by 2.7 seconds ahead of French Kanska, Anthony Abbas third, and Rasmus Markkinen in your top four. You've got Max Hoffer, Robbie Markkinen, Lorenzo Van Wright, and Kevin Ludy to round out your top eight. We had Barry Pullinger into 10th place, and then Luca Kamali and Mark Lutfer to round out your top 12 for the uh, Ratsabona motorsport team in the end 9.9 .9 seconds adrift. We've got Dimitris Vazilaras down in 13th, the first of our Masters runners which was Cristiano Magado but really closed in on towards the end by Iger Mukin who was just two places back and second in class. Tamsin Germain came home third with Martin Pierce dropping right towards the back, fourth in Masters and 22nd place overall but uh, most of them managed to finish. We had Christoph Adams down in...